Hello, this is returning to the second part of our uh, lesson on the driving question How do I multiply by large and small powers of 10? We're going to start off with a question based on basically what we were doing at the end of the last lesson. So we looked at how we deal with numbers that are smaller than, that, 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 are, that, are, that are less than whole numbers, decimal numbers, and how we, we multiply by them. If you need to look back on it, have a have a look now. And obviously, you've got a bit of a help with this one, so we should be whizzing through these relatively quickly. But pause, take a look back if you need to, and then have a go. When you're ready, restart the lesson, and I'll go through the answers. So let's have a look at this. I know because I'm told that 17, sorry, 12 times 17 is 204. And what I'm at, or what I'm trying to work out is what is 1.2 times 1.7. Now, remembering how we did this previously, I would 1.2, sorry, 1.2 is the same as 12 divided by 10. 1.7 is the same as 17 divided by 10. So altogether, I've got 17 times 12 divided by 10 divided by 10. I know that 17 times 12 is 204. I there and I know divide by 10 by divide by 10 is the same as divide by 100. I can divide 204 by 100 and that gives me 2.04. So my answer is 2.04. With my next one, I know that 34, that 3.4 is 34 divided by 10, and 89, or oh sorry, 8.9 is 89 divided by 10. So again, same as before, 34 times 89 divided by 10 divided by 10 3026 divided by 100 is 30.26 and lastly I won't bother writing down these because we know how this works now we know 23 times 43 divided by 10 divided by 10. So that's going to be 989 divided by 100, which is 9.89. So those are my answers, 2.04, oh sorry. 30.26 and 9.89. Again, the, the numbers there is the decimal, it's, it's where the decimal point is that, that makes a difference. If you need to do any corrections with that, please do so now, now then rejoin the lesson. So, can you write this question down, please? I'm going to go through this myself. But I would like you to write this down and, and have a little think about how we might approach this.
So let's have a look at this question. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to perform an estimate. I want to know roughly what this answer should be. So 2.6 times 3.2. If I'm going to estimate the answer to that, what I've got to do is convert them into one, sig one significant figure. So that's going to give me, so this is approximately equal to 3 times 3, which is 9, which is approximately 9. So my answer is going to be about 9. It's not going to be exactly 9, but it's going to be about 9. So how does that help me? Well, now I'm going to do a multiplication. I'm going to actually just forget about the decimal point for a minute. I'm just going to multiply the numbers together. So I'm going to multiply 26 times 32. It doesn't matter what order I do them in. So 2 times 6 is 12, but then a 2 carry the 1. 2 times 2 is 4, add 1 is 5. 226 is R52. Now I'm going to multiply by 30, so I'll write down a 0. 3 6 is R18, put down an 8, carry the 1. 3, 3 2 is a 6, and 1 is 7. And now I'm going to add those numbers together. 2 and 0 is 2. 5 and 8 is 13, put down a 3, carry the 1, 7 and have 7 add 1 is 8. 8, 3, 2, 832. So what I need to do now is look at these numbers and think to myself, right, okay, what have I actually done? Well, I need an answer around about 9, so I could just say, right, 8, 8.32. But also, if I look back at my previous method, 26, I've got to turn 26, oh sorry, to turn, yeah, to turn 26 into 2.6, I've got to divide by 10. To turn 32 into 3.2, I've got to divide by 10. So I've got to do that to answer as well, divide by 10, divide by 10. So I'm dividing by 100, 832 divided by 100 is... 8.32. So my estimate of 9 is pretty good. Also, I can use it to make certain that it, it fits into this question. So that's the method that I would like you to use for the next questions that we've got coming up, please. I would like you to multiply them together as whole numbers, and then I would like you to use whatever, you know, the the values of the powers of 10 that you need to multiply by or divide by. Same as we did last lesson, same as we've just done on that previous question. So if you haven't got all that written down, please pause the lesson now whilst you do so. Okay, your turn. So I've given you quite a few questions to do there. So I'd like you now to work your way through. Again, bear in mind, please, that these questions are to be done as uh, without the use of a calculator. I don't want to use a calculator at the end to check, but I want you to use a mental method, remembering and revising your, um, your multiplication, your long multiplication method. Okay, when you're ready, pause the lesson and answer the questions, please. Okay, so with these questions, I've just gone through and worked out the answers and given you the answers. If these aren't the answers that you've got, what we need to do is stop. Well, what you need to do is stop, go through your work, find your mistake. 
it's probably going to be in the arithmetic you've probably done something like multiplying six by seven and getting 36 or something like that and, you know you've made a, a, a silly little error, error, arithmetical error that will be very easy to find out when you look at it so just take your time please work your way through your mistakes and uh, be ready to carry on in a few moments if you didn't make any mistakes congratulations you've done really well Okay, so the next part of the question is a bit of a thinker. For each part of question 12, so the questions that you just done, count the number of digits after the decimal point in the question and in the answer. What do you notice? So both the numbers in the question and the, all the numbers after the decimal point in the question, all the numbers after the decimal point in the answer. What do you notice? Okay, so briefly let's look at it in this question. First question, I've got one number there, one number there, that makes two. Two numbers in the answer. Two numbers in the question, two numbers in the answer. Two numbers in the question, two numbers in the answer. Two numbers in the question, two numbers in the answer. Three numbers in the question. Three numbers in the answer. Three numbers in the question, three numbers in the answer. Three numbers in the question, three numbers in the answer. Three numbers in the question. Three numbers in the answer. Three numbers in the question. Three numbers in the answer. So there seems to be a bit of a rule. Without working out the question 3.26 times 5.12, I can tell you the number of numbers after the decimal point in the answer. And obviously, I hope it's obvious now, that answer is going to be 4. So that's a a really useful check that you can use to help make to see if you've got your answer correct have I got the right number of answers numbers after the decimal point which is really really important when you're dealing with questions like this okay if you understand that or you you think you've got that written down and we'll carry on otherwise pause the lesson just for a few moments and get ready to carry on Okay, this next question, a car can travel 13.8 kilometres on 1 litre of petrol. How far can it travel on 8.8 .8 litres of petrol? When you're ready, pause the lesson and start answering your questions. Okay, so one question, nice multiplication question. So first thing we do is we just do the multiplication without actually looking at the decimal point. So eight times 138 is 1,104. 80 times 138 is exactly the same one. You've got a zero in front of it. So I write down a zero, multiply by eight. I get those. I get 11,040. Adding those together, I get 12,144. And then I've got to start looking at my decimal points. I have two numbers after the decimal point in the question. One there, one there makes two. And therefore, I must have two numbers after the decimal point in my answer. So my decimal point has got to go between the one and the four. So the answer becomes 121.44. If I do an estimate on it, um, I can do an estimate relatively easily. I'm going to use 14 times 9. 14 times 9 is 140, take away 14, 126. So again, my answer is not a bad version of it. Um, it's pretty close to, to where it should be. My estimate is pretty close, so that tells me it is definitely 126. 
not 12.144 or 1214.4, so my calculation is correct. Okay, pause that if you need to, and then we're moving on. Use the multiplication facts to work out the answer. So at this point, we should be able to do this pretty quickly. Um, use the, F, the material that we've just found. Uh, answer the four questions, please. Pause the lesson and get ready. Okay, so now really, this is very, very easy to write down. Uh, 3.6 times 0 0.14 equals, now I know the digits are going to be a 5, a 0, and a 4. The only thing I have to decide is where the decimal point goes. So three numbers after the quest, after the decimal point in the answer means I'm going to need three numbers after the decimal point in the answer. So my decimal point is going to be there, so I've got to put a zero on front, 0 0.50, 0 0.504. For my next one, 10.8 times 0 0.04. Again, I know that there are the digits are going to be a 4, a 3, and a 2. Once again, I've got three numbers after the decimal point. So my answer must be that. Then 0 0.36 times 7.2. This is going to give me a 2. A five, a nine, and a two, with three numbers after the decimal point. Two point five nine two, and lastly, eight point nine four times naught point three two will give me an answer of two eight. Six zero eight with one two three four numbers after the decimal point one two three four numbers after the decimal point two point eight six zero eight so in reality with that question you don't actually do any multiplication it's all done for you all you have to do is to decide where your decimal point goes if you need some time to write the corrections pause the lesson now and rejoin as soon as you can. Okay, proper multiplication now. Work out the area of the shapes. Be very careful with some of these. Take your time, and I feel certain that you'll work all these out correctly. So pause the lesson now and get ready to carry on with your work. Okay, we'll make a start. The first one's pretty easy. We have 0.2 times 0.09. It's a rectangle. So we multiply the two numbers together. Two nines are 18, but I need three numbers after the decimal point. So I've got two in the, the eight and the one, but I have to put a zero on so that I have three numbers after the decimal point. So my answer is 0.018 of a square meter. The next one, I multiply 3.4 by 
gives me 4.08 square meters. If you left it there, you've made a slight error because that shape is a triangle. So we have to halve it. So we have to divide it by two to give me an answer of 2.04 square meters. The next shape is a parallelogram, base times height, so 7.9 times 6.6, .6. multiply it out, two numbers after the decimal point, 75.24 square centimetres, D, another parallelogram, so it's multiplying those two numbers together. Two numbers after the decimal point again to give me 503.88 square centimeters. And lastly, E, another triangle, we multiply the two numbers together, add them, divide by two, and then have two numbers after the decimal point, 136.88 square meters. Okay, now you might need to rewind the lesson a little bit to check any corrections that you have. Please do so. Take your time to get the corrections done, please. It's really important that you understand if you made a mistake, where you've made that mistake. Once you've done all your corrections, uh, rejoin the lesson, please. Okay, Anita's planning to paint the walls of the living room. Anita needs 0.1 meters of paint for each square meter. How much paint does she need to paint all the walls once? Okay, so there you've got three um, elevations of walls. Obviously, you can put them together. You can make the, the room. It's got a door and a window and two blank walls. Uh, the room's rectangular, which is quite important because that means you've got two pairs of equal walls which obviously makes each other a little bit easier but we've got some deductions to do as well so obviously when, when it comes to working those that we have to do some subtractions so work your way through that please when you've done so sorry pause the pause the lesson work your way through it when you've done when you've done so rejoin rejoin me as i go through the work So I started by doing my own set of the diagrams and I labelled each wall 1, 2, 3 and 4 just for my convenience, just so I knew exactly what I was doing. Uh, then I started working in order. first thing I did was wall 1, this wall, I'm oh, sorry, this wall, uh, 2.9 by 2.4, multiplied them together. Uh, moved the decimal point over and got an area of 6.96 square meters. At this point I noted that wall 3 was exactly the same. So wall 1 and the 6.96 square meters, wall 3 is 6.96 square meters. The next thing that I did was wall 2. Wall 2 is the wall with the door. So I did exactly the same thing again. First thing I did was I multiplied 3.75 by 2.4, which gave me exactly 9 square meters. Then, let me just put some lines on there to tidy that, make it a little bit easier to understand. I then worked out the area of the door, which is 0.6 by 2, which is 1.2. I then took my 9 square meters and took 1.2 square meters off it for a total of 7.8 square meters. Okay. 
may also know. And then we'll take the area of the window. 0 0.7 by 0 0.65 gives me 0 0.455. I know that wall 4, the wall with the window in, is the same overall size as wall 2, the wall with the door in. So I took the overall size of that wall, which was 9, and took 0 0.45. 455 off it to give me 8.4 8.545 square meters for wall 4 at that point I added the area of each wall together labeled and I got a total area for all the paintwork in that building of 30.265 square meters I've been told that <clears throat> me, that the area of the wall or that the, the paint each 0 0.1 litre of paint covers one square metre so I've multiplied 30.265 by 0 0.1 as we know from way back at the start of this lesson not this period not this video the one before multiplying by 0 0.1 is the same as dividing by 10 so I just divided that by 10 to give me 3.025 of a litre litres and that's how much paint you need so a little bit more than three litres she couldn't just buy three litres she'd have to buy four litres to paint the walls if you need to rewind a little bit just to check on where I got all these measurements from please do so now make certain your corrections are right and um, when you're ready, rejoin the lesson, please. So, look back at question 13. That was the question where we looked at how we figured or that we could use the number of the number of numbers after the decimal point in the question to tell us the number of numbers after the decimal point in the answer could you write could you write that rule down in your own words please um, possibly send it to your teacher I think the teachers would like to see it and also does that rule still work for that for those numbers and if not why not and how could you could you do it? So have a look at that question, please. Um, don't be afraid to ask your teachers if you don't quite understand why it does or doesn't work. And um, yeah, thank you very much. Bye.